Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we are working on a whipping chat. So get out whatever it is you're working on. Work along with me. I am working on my Halloween diamond painting from Spell Queen. I got this one a little bit ago and I decided to pull it out this morning and work on it because I do want to work on at least one Halloween diamond painting this year. And since I'm a little salty about the door contest, I figure, you know what, I'll put the fox away for right now, which he's just sitting on the couch here. And I'm going to work on a Halloween diamond painting. Today has not been my day. Um, one, it's really dreary outside already. And I, I'm tired. I'm really tired. I went to bed at a good time, but I'm still really tired today. Um, I woke up this morning and it dawned on me to check Mr. Coffee's uh, tablet. Because if you guys know, I was selling the stuff from the shop to buy his tablet. And I did buy it. Um, there was only one problem. When I went to buy it, um, I was going to buy the Wi-Fi data model and I ended up buying just the Wi-Fi model. Now to him it won't matter because to him it's oh my god you bought me a whole tablet. Um, but to me it matters because he really wanted the data one and I know he'll love it either way but I still feel like kicking myself in the butt for not paying attention to that. I was so excited to order it that I didn't even pay attention. So either way. There was that this morning and then I felt kind of defeated because I had this whole big thing in my head and then I looked and noticed that I got the wrong one. Um, secondly, for those wondering about the door contest, that was a sham. That's just what it was. Um, I don't know who judged it or how they judged it, but apparently they wanted cutesy Halloween fall, not actual Halloween. Because I came in third place. I am salty as all get out. Um, I will put up pictures of the doors that did win and congrats to those folks. I mean, I'm not trying to say that, you know, whatever, but I still feel like my door was best and I was robbed from my, my prize. My prize ended up being a blanket and a coffee cup, which, you know, that's nice and all, but you know, I had my eyes on a bigger prize. So I'm a little bummed out about that. Mr. Coffee's working today, so uh, I don't have to worry about him like seeing me all bummed out. And I'll, I'll be more excited when he comes home tonight. He gets home late, so he'll be home around 11 o'clock. Um, we're going to celebrate our anniversary actually on... Uh, we're actually going to celebrate our anniversary on Wednesday because tomorrow is his last day at KLX before he switches jobs. And his new boss told him to take the rest of the week off until the 2nd. So he'll start his new job on the 2nd. And so he's taking the rest of the week off and he's going to be spending time with us. And then tomorrow, or Wednesday, we're going to celebrate our anniversary, like dinner and all that stuff. And more likely, I'll just make him a nice pot roast because we were finally able to find pot roast at the store. And he, we've been both dying for pot roast. So I'm probably just going to make a pot roast. So yeah, so there was that. Um, so I told you guys today, I would tell you the story of how me and Mr. Coffee met. Now... It wasn't like anything like hugely romantic or anything. We actually met through a mutual friend. Um, I'll tell you this story quick and then we'll go into the coffee house happenings. Um, we met through a mutual friend. I went to a friend's house one night when he was having like a little get together with a couple of his other friends that were couples. Now, I didn't really like this friend like that, but he was a good friend of mine from the store I worked at in Walmart. So I was just like, you know, whatever, I'll come hang out. You know, I was new to the area anyways, and I wanted to make a couple more friends. And that's how I met Mr. Coffee. Um, we passed each other's, we crossed each other's path quite a few times for a few months. Um, after I had broken up with Minna's dad, and he had a bad breakup from his girlfriend at the time, um, we decided to date. We dated for exactly three months. Yep, three months. So we dated from July of 20... What is it? July 26th of 2019 until October 26th, which is when we got married. Um, our, our motto is, why wait? And we were laying in bed one night and Mr. Coffee's like, why wait to get married? If you know you're going to spend the rest of your life with somebody, why wait? So I was like, I, I guess. We were young, so we were like, why not? And we got married. Um... I, I had only known Mr. Coffee for maybe uh, not even a year. So, like, it was very uncommon to get married that quickly. But it's not how I pictured getting married, but it was, like, the best day of my life. So, I can't complain. 
Um, I loved my wedding dress. We had a black and white themed wedding, of course, because it was a little inside. It wasn't even really an inside joke. It was just the fact that we were black and white and getting married. So we decided to have a black and white wedding. So the men wore black. The women wore white. Man Minna, about to say Maggie. Minna had a matching dress to mine, except for hers had sleeves. Mine was sleeveless. Um, I was a size six at the time, too, so I could just walk into any store and get a dress. I actually got my dress from Davis Bridal. It was on sale for $100, and I was like, uh, sold? I didn't want anything really flashy or ex exact. Like, I'm not a big flashy person when it when it came to that. I just wanted to get married, and I was like, $100 dress is beautiful. It fits. That's all that matters. They had one in Minna's size that was like mine. So we all wore, me and Minna wore a white dress with, uh, white dress with a black slat sash. My maid of honor wore a black dress with a white slash sash. Why do I keep saying slash? And uh, Mr. Coffee and his uh, best man wore black shirts, white ties. And then, of course, Mr. Coffee had on like a checkerboard, uh, a checkerboard belt, and his his uh, best man had on like Converse. It was a very laid back wedding. So, it's not anything spectacular. We met through a mutual friend, got married a few months later, and now we're the coffees. <laughs> there really isn't a whole lot to that story. Like, I was a little worried, though, when I first introduced him to my parents, because the first time he ever met my parents is when he asked my dad, could he marry me? Yes, he did ask my dad, could he marry me? I'm pretty sure Papa at the time was like, what the hell did she done bring in this house? But now, now they're thick as thieves. It's disgusting. Every time I turn around and do something, Papa, your daughter's being mean to me. Stop being mean to my son-in-law. Like, I feel like my parents love my husband more than me sometimes. Just saying. It's like that New York thing. They all have that New York thing. My my stepmom is from New York. My dad is from New York. Mr. Coffee's from New York. They just kind of, like, have, like, their little New York talks. And they're like, she don't know nothing about Coney Island cones. And I'm like, what's a Coney? I'm thinking it's ice cream. They're all talking about hot dogs or something. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Like, they, it's like they speak French or something. So, like, they love him now, but I'm pretty sure at first my dad was like, what the hell did she just bring into my house? Um, <laughs> um, especially since Mr. Coffee was heavily tattooed. Well, he wasn't too heavily tattooed when I met him. By the time, you know, a after, like, I got him a chest tattoo because I thought it was really cool. So we went to a tattoo shop where I went to get all my tattoos from. Well, at the time I had, like, three tattoos. Um... But I took him to that tattoo shop because I knew it was a reputable tattoo shop. And it wasn't done out of somebody's basement like my wrist tattoos. We're not going to talk about it. Um, and he got a really cool chest tattoo. So on the top of his chest, if you've ever seen like the picture of him when I did the mask, crocheted the mask. Um, the top of his chest looks like it says ammo. It actually says infamous. And I just thought that was a really fitting tattoo for him because... I don't know. He was always infamous to me. So, that's how me and Mr. Coffee met in a nutshell. Like, there really isn't nothing romantic about it. I mean, I mean, I mean unless you want to do, like, the mutual friends thing and crossing paths over the course of a year and then finally deciding to date. And we only actually started dating because his mom came out one day after I had spent the day at his house. His mom came out while we were sitting outside talking. I was getting ready to leave to go back home, and she came out, and she's like, Are you guys dating? And he just kind of looked at me, and I looked at him, and I was like, uh, yes? I didn't want her to think I was a trollop, okay? Like, I didn't want her to be like, hey, no, look, I'm over here to bang your son and get out of here. No, it wasn't like that. So, hold on, I gotta put my charger in. I'm like, I, I didn't want her to think I was a trollop on the weekend, so I was like, yeah, we're dating. You can say we're dating if you want to. And then we actually started dating, and then three months later, we got married. So, that is that. I'm very excited for him to come home, though. Like, he's he's not having the best day at work. He wants to come home, and I'm like, it's only a couple more hours, then he can come home, and then everything will be fine. The sad part is, I didn't know whether to wait on his gift until Wednesday when we celebrate, or just to give it to him tonight, but I'm just going to give it to him tonight. Um, just because I know I can't wait that long. Does anybody else get really excited when you have a really good gift for your spouse that you, you just can't wait to give it to them? We suck at getting each other gifts. It never comes when it's supposed to. Like, the gifts, we always give them early. This year, the only reason he didn't get it early is because it literally showed up an hour ago. 
Like, that's literally the only reason. So, yeah, we suck at giving each other gifts because we can never just be patient and wait for the... Like, Christmas? No. Christmas is whatever day our gift comes in from Amazon. Here's your Christmas gift. Like, that's how that works. Um, I'm not sure why we get so excited. But it's like, we're excited to see what the other one thinks of the gift we got. So we have to, like, rush and give it to them immediately. <laughs> so, uh... He'll get it as soon as he gets home tonight. The sad part is he doesn't get home until later, but that's okay. So today was fun. Today was our first day back from homeschooling. Uh, we had a four-day weekend, which sucks because when you have a long time off, I, this even goes for when you have a job. When you have, like, an extended amount of time off of something, and then you have to go back to it, trying to get back into that routine, good God. I spent half the morning fussing with Maggie to sit up in her chair and stop laying in it because she just wanted to lay down. She got used... When they didn't have school, okay? My kids are very sleepy children, okay? I'm very lucky. Um, when they didn't have school, we were getting up at 11 o'clock, okay? That just, that's just what time my house wakes up. 11 o'clock. The dogs don't get up until before then. The kids don't get up until before then. And, like, this past weekend... I go to get up, and Killian was laying with me. I told this story in my, my live. Uh, Saturday, Mr. Coffee got up and went to work. Now, my brain, I'm so used to Mr. Coffee when he leaves that nobody's in bed with me. My kids don't sleep with me. They never have. They were never one of those kids that were like, Mommy, I'm scared of the dark. Can I come sleep in your room? They were never like that. They When my kids went to sleep, they were asleep, okay? Like, I always laughed at my neighbor because she would always have to go back two and three times to go put her daughter down, and I'm like, she's like, how do you get your kids to stay asleep? I wear them out to the point where they can't move by the time it's bedtime, and then they don't wake up until they literally have had enough sleep. There's no magic trick to it. I just have sleepy kids. It's in our blood. And, uh, so yeah, so I'm laying in bed, minding my own business, sleeping, drooling all over myself, and I feel something touch my butt in my sleep, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Well, I did, I, I, my brain immediately goes into attack mode because it's not like, oh, something touched me. Wake up, see what it is, go back to sleep like a reasonable person. No, y'all forget. Y'all talking to Miss Coffee. I'm the most extra person. Like, as Brad Mondo says, I'm living my extra life, okay? So I'm sitting there, and I feel whatever it was. Now, before he, he kicked me in the butt, he boofed at me and woke me up. And I was like, what is your deal? Like... He gets sad when Mr. Coffee leaves. So he needs like a little extra attention when Mr. Coffee leaves. He's such a big baby. And so usually I'll pet him for a little bit after Mr. Coffee leaves. And I'm like, it's all right, bud. He'll be back soon. And he'll like watch Mr. Coffee leave out the window. But in this, when it's super early in the morning, no, I'm not about that life. That's not happening. So I just rolled back over after he boofed at me and woke me up. I'm like, I'm not petting you. You can wait until I wake up and I'll pet you when I wake up. Well, he decided that wasn't good enough for him. So he goes and climbs up on the bed. Now, the dogs never sleep in the bed. Never, 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 never. Literally would have a bed made out of dog fur if I did that. And it's bad enough trying to do unboxings in there and have them take my hand and roll it in tape just to get all the dog hair off the bed because of their blankets or whatever. They will sneak in there and lay on the bed. So I'm like, you know, I don't let the dog sleep in the bed. Well, Killian decides he's sleeping in the bed, but he's not just going to sleep in the bed. No, no, no. He's going to sleep on Mr. Coffee's side of the bed. So he gets in the bed, and he lays down. And I didn't think anything of it, because I felt the bed move, but I just thought I had moved or something. I just didn't... It just wasn't registering in my brain. Well, as I'm sitting there, I feel something touch my butt. I wake up, without warning, just haul off and punch the crap out of Mr. Coffee's pillow. One, because nobody is supposed to be in bed with me. And Mr. Coffee already knows. If you wake me up, the proper way to wake me up, and the only kid that knows how to do this is Orion, apparently. The proper way to wake me up is to shake me, like do that light shaking, like, hey, it's time to get up. And then take two steps back, because I'm more than likely going to wake up swinging. Why? I don't know why I do this. I don't know why. But I, I literally wake up swinging. And Mr. Coffee asked me all the time, why do you do that? I don't know. Like, my brain is just like, no one's supposed to be here. And then I just start swinging at things that aren't there. Uh, Mr. Coffee has almost gotten punched in the face quite a few times in the 11, last 11 years because of the fact that whenever I 
uh, wake up, I start swinging. Again, I don't know why that is. It wasn't always like that. It didn't become like that until Mr. Coffee moved here. Now, in the course of me and Mr. Coffee being married, Mr. Coffee came out here to the oil field. He was out here for five years. Maggie was about a year old. Orion would have been two or three. And he came out here. He lived here for five or six years by himself. And then we decided it was time to get the family together. So we all moved up here, which was, you know, two years ago. And so we've been up here ever since. So for those folks that are like, you know, Miss Coffee, if you hate the cold weather, why do you live there? Because love makes you do stupid things, okay? Don't judge me and my love choices, okay? So that's why we're here in North Dakota, where it is frigidly cold nine months out of the year. Um, and once it snows once, that snow is on the ground until the next following year in like May or June. Because, yeah, either way. Every, every winter, I, like, put a little notch on my belt. Like, I survived another year. Bring it on, winter next year. Woo! Like, it's like riding a roller coaster, I swear. So, there's that. Um, but, yeah, I placed third in the door contest to a couple of Walmart decorations, which kind of make me mad. But, you know, it is what it is. Sorry, Daisy started boofing. But, uh, yeah, so that, as you can tell, that still makes me mad. But yeah, so I look over when I'm in bed and I see Killian laying there and I was like, okay, it, it's time to get up now. Like, why are you in my bed? And he like looks at me, boofs at me again and then hops off the bed. I get up, wash my butt, clean my face, not at the same time. Um, and then I head out to go check to see if the kids are awake. If the kids are not awake, I will go walk the dogs because they know when they wake up. Um, I'll probably be right back because I'm more likely I'm out walking the dogs. If mommy's not here, she's walking the dogs. If she's gone longer than 30 minutes, that's when you call Papa to tell Papa to call mommy. So they have like their own little set of rules that they have to follow whenever I'm not here. So I'm sitting there. I get up and I happen to look over at Killian. He had his cone on because we can't have him scratching his face. So I will leave it off when I can during the day. And then at night before bed, I'll put it back on him just so he doesn't scratch in the middle of the night and I don't catch him. And he ends up breaking open his, his wounds. So I'm sitting there and I, I look over at Killian and I see something in his cone that's not him. And I'm like, is that a bug? Like, what is that? Now, Mr. Coffee's ears are gauged. They're not like hugely gauged. I don't know what size they are. I've never, I've never asked him that. They're, they're big enough that a straw can go through them when he has in his earrings, but not much bigger than that. Like literally the size of a straw. And so I see something in Killian's cone and I'm like, what the hell is that? So I go to take his cone off and it falls out. And of course I freak out for like 30 seconds because you know, what is it? Here, apparently sometimes when Mr. Coffee sleeps, he will sleep his earrings right out of his ears. How this happens, I am unaware. If you uh, if you have an explanation for this, please dial 1-800-MY-MESLO book. Um, because I don't understand. Make it make sense. I have worn earrings almost my entire life and never woke up to my earring just laying in bed. Just sitting there chilling. Apparently, his earring fell out while he was sleeping. Oh, this drill's upside down. His earring fell out while he was sleeping. He didn't notice it either this morning when he got up and got ready for work. And if he did notice, he couldn't find it. Here, I'm thinking it was underneath the blankets because that's where Killian was. Killian, when I woke up that morning, he was like underneath the blankets at the bottom of the bed with his head sticking out. I don't know why he does the things he does. So, meanwhile, Daisy's looking at me like, well, why does he get to sleep in the bed? And I'm just, I'm, yeah, it's, it, this is my life, folks. So I get up and go on about my day. I have been like anxiously checking the website for the complex to see you know, what my competition was. And up until this morning, I only had two other people. And then this morning, the lady submitted. What kills me about the contest is the one lady that won second place, her decorations were for Thanksgiving, not fall. And her door even said, be thankful. And I'm like, I'm thankful at the fact that you stole my prize because you don't even have up Halloween or fall. Yeah, they're the same colors for Thanksgiving. But her door literally says, be thankful. 
So I'm like, that's a ripoff. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to enter it. I don't plan on being here next year, to be honest, to enter in again. We are going to be talking to uh, a lone person, like Remax or something, to try to find a house. I want a house. I want a place where my dogs can have room to run and play outside whenever they want to. I want a place that my kids can go run outside whenever they want to. Does anybody notice the similarity between dogs and kids? Like, you have to wear both of them out for them to sleep good. They'll tear up everything in your house if you don't pay them enough attention. They get into stuff and they don't ever tell you what they did wrong. But they always have that look of guilt on their face. I'm just now realizing this. My kids are 14, 9, and 8. Nobody told me of this. I just, like, as I'm saying that, I'm like, why do these kids remind me of the dogs? Oh, jeez. Um, so yeah, so there's that. And I tried recording this whipping chat earlier, and it just, it wasn't going well. And I'm, like, getting frustrated because it wasn't going well. And I'm like, oh, forget it. I'll do it later. So now it's, like, late, late in the day on Monday. Um... I am going to make dinner for the kids, but the kids ran upstairs. The kids finished homeschool today and ran upstairs. Maggie was on her spelling words, and she's trying to, like, read her spelling words, and she is failing miserably today because she just doesn't want to do it. So she has reverted back to sounding it out, and then it being a completely different word, like the pup 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 truck What the hell? So, and I'd say that every time. Every time she says, she, she tries to sound it out and it comes out a different word. I'm like, H how? How? But if nothing else, I know how to do expanded form with numbers now. Um, we did that all morning. And then uh, Mr. Coffee got up and got went to work and he's like, I shouldn't be working today. I'm like, I know, but don't worry. You'll be home later on this evening and we'll sit and chit chat when you come home. He's bummed that he has to work today because normally he would just take the day off. But since it's it's his second to last day at this business, he's like, it kind of be kind of wrong to take the day off. I'm like, yeah, I get it. I understand. It's no big deal. As long as I get to spend some time with him at some point this week, I'm fine. And since he'll be off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, yeah, that's fine. That and he'll get to make live because he, he tried to play the guilt trip with me the other day when I hurt my wrist. Which, let me tell y'all about the wrist thing. I'll tell y'all. He tried to play the guilt trip with me because he got off early so that he could be in live. And then I had canceled live to make it for t um, Saturday. And he couldn't take off early Saturday to come. So he was like really upset that he didn't m get to make it to live. And he's like, you know they're going to be asking about the didgeridoo. I'm like, I am aware of this. Don't worry. They'll live. They'll all survive without the dang didgeridoo. Either way. So. As you guys know, I hurt my wrist, which is the reason why you had a live Saturday afternoon and not Friday evening. So let me explain how I hurt my wrist. Now, I'm still unsure if I hit her head or her knee. She says I hit her in the head. But I swore I saw her knee at some point. It was slow motion, but in my brain, I don't know what I hit because I turned my head at the last minute. What I was doing was I was chasing Maggie to get... The glue away from her. Maggie's newest obsession right now. Does anybody else's kids get into an obsession of getting into something in particular? And they don't stop. And they just constantly are trying to get into this one thing. Maggie's right now is Elmer's glue. Why? Because do you remember when you were in school. And you would put the Elmer's glue on your hands. And you would peel it off to make it look like snake skin. And that was like the coolest thing since sliced bread. That is Maggie right now. She has discovered what it, how cool it is to put glue all over yourself. And I mean all over yourself, okay? She had glue in her hair, on her eyelashes, on her toes. Literally had glue everywhere. Well, I told her to get me the glue. And she like yelped and ran off. I don't know why she yelped and ran off. But that triggered me to run after her for some reason because that's a fun thing to do. You know, let's run after your kid for some glue. So as I'm running after her, she has like a horror movie moment and she falls. And when she fell, I went to go swing to get the glue. I went uh, like out of her hand. And when I went to go swing, she moved. And I don't know if she was trying to sit up or what. But she moved and my wrist 
hit her, like I said, I think it's her, it was either her knee or her head. She said I hit her in the head. And I'm like, well, why didn't you just give me the glue? And she's like, because I like playing with it. Now, I'm sitting here going, okay, no more glue for you. Don't let me catch you with glue or you're going to get in trouble. And she's, okay. Why did the very next day she got in trouble for doing the exact same goddamn old thing? Y'all, look, I was so frustrated. I'm like, what the hell is up with you with glue? She's like, I like it. I like cheese, but you don't see me in there sneaking it like I'm a little mouse. She goes, I like cheese. We're not talking about what you like right now. Oh, y'all. And then the next day after that, I find glue in her room again. We have found five bottles of glue. Five. She has smuggled, smuggled being the key word, five bottles of glue. I have no idea where the hell she's getting them from. I was like, hold up. Did she steal these from the store or something? Because I don't remember having like liquid glue because... Uh, I don't buy liquid glue. I usually buy glue sticks. We found six of those in her room. Again, I don't know where she got them from because I didn't buy school supplies this year. They got, they each got a folder and a, a, a hundred page spiral notebook. That's it. But somehow little Maggie Pie has found glue and she's just smuggling it from like wherever. Well, it took us the longest time to figure out where the hell she was getting it from. And then I caught her in the act. Apparently, now every year, and I don't know if other parents do this. This might be just me with my weird hoarding. Every year after the school year's over, if the kids did any artwork or anything, I take it and collect it all. Like if it's on the refrigerator or something. I take and collect it all. And I take their old backpack that they used that year. And I put the artwork in the backpack. Because more than likely, if your kid has artwork, it has their name and their grade on it. So I would put their old artwork in their old backpacks. Well, in one of one or a couple of Orion's old backpacks, he had glue. She had found the trifecta of glue in Orion's old backpacks because every old backpack had a bottle of glue in it. Why didn't I know this? Because I don't check my son's backpack. Why should I? Right now he's homeschooled. Before, I didn't really need to because it was always left open so I could see what was in it. But I didn't think about there being glue in it because that's the last thing I thought because she was, you know, I thought she had just found glue somewhere. And in this house, it wouldn't be surprising if you found a bottle of glue or something. Like, it's glue. So I wasn't, you know, thinking that it was Orion's room that she was getting the glue from. And I didn't know where the hell she was getting it from until I caught her red-handed grabbing some out of his backpack. I'm just thankful she wasn't trying to eat it. Because I have heard of children eating glue. And I can only imagine what that does to your insides. I'm just saying. N no, thank you. So, Gloomageddon, as I like to call it, uh, is finally over until, so I thought, until this morning when I went in her room and found two more glow stick or glue sticks in her, her desk drawer. And I'm like, where in the hell are you getting all these this glue from? Like, I don't understand what am I doing wrong here. And then I remembered she just made a scarecrow and a pumpkin on top of her head for class. And she had to glue some of the stuff onto it. So I gave her the glue stick and put it in her dress, her, her uh, desk drawer. And she, I don't even think she realized it was in there. There was another one that was in there that was all used up. Because that was the first one we used. And then the second one we used was in there. And I was just like, oh my god, with all the flipping glue. And Mr. Coffee's like, what's up with you and glue? Why are you being a Nazi to the glue? And I'm like, because your daughter, and I explained to him what happened. Now, if you remember, I did a video on some security cameras not too long ago. And I have them in the kids' rooms, and they record whenever they feel, like, whenever they sense motion. Well, I showed Mr. Coffee the recording of his daughter going in and essentially taking this glue, rubbing it in her hair like it's hair moisturizer, Rubbing it on her face like it's a face mask. Rubbing it on her arms like it's hand lotion. Like, she just was wiping it on herself. And then sat there watching TV quietly, picking it off. And I'm like, I don't... Maggie does things that makes me questioning my parenting. Like, like it's, it's one of those do I get mad moments. She makes me have these a lot. And it's like, have you ever caught your child doing something good but something bad? I've caught my daughter still in vegetables vegetables what do you what do you what do you how do you punish that 
no more vegetables for you? Like, how do how you get mad at that? Like, Maggie will have you questioning all kinds of weird things in your brain that you didn't think as a parent you would have to question. I, I swear, I told my parents this the other night, I swear whenever they, they, they pass that curse on to me that they hope I have a child like me, one, I don't think that's such a bad thing. I'm not a bad person. Now I do because I, I see the attitude that comes from Maggie and Minna, and I'm just like, ooh, that maybe that was a bad thing. But, uh... So yeah, like I'm I'm just questioning all kinds of sanity that I have left when it comes to Maggie and the things that she does and like is this a bad thing or is this a good thing? Like I'm trying to learn how to pick my battles, but it's hard when it's Maggie and she does things that are like good. Like she'll try to steal milk. And I'm like, it's milk, it's healthy for her, but like this isn't the time to have it. And I explained to her, you know, it's not the time to have milk, so you can't just come sneak milk whenever you want to. I don't like her to have milk before bed unless she brushes her teeth first because milk, you know, that sits in your mouth will rot your teeth out. And so she, she's just Maggie. She just, she does what she feels she needs to do for that moment. And she's not bad, but Maggie has her moments where she makes me want to rip all my hair out. Like I love my daughter to death, but good God. I'm so, and my dad put it best the other night and I was talking to him about it. I'm, I've gotten so used to Minna and Orion with the very laid back style that they have that they don't really do anything besides sleep that when Maggie came around and I actually had to do stuff, I didn't know what to do because the first two had, I had it easy with the first two and then I had Maggie. We all have that one child that is our birth control child. We love all of our children equally, but there's that one child that makes you never want to have children again. Like, for my parents, it was my sister Jasmine. She was the last. She's the baby. She's the worst. She's the one that would get into everybody's stuff. And I remember once when she had, when I was older, I want to say I was 16, 17, um, I had some hair lotion, or some hair lotion. I had some body lotion that I kept on my dresser. And we shared a room. Um, and I, I, I would always end up having to keep buying lotion and I didn't know why I was going through so much lotion so quickly. Come to find out my sister was stealing it. So to be spiteful and mean, I put Nair hair remover in my hand lotion. She never stole anything from me again. But, but my sister always had sticky fingers when it came to my stuff. And that's like a sibling thing. Maggie won't steal like normal stuff from Orion like toys or anything or shoes or clothes, she steals glue, apparently. Usually she doesn't even take anything from Orion. Half the time she just knows Orion's not paying attention and she just goes and helps herself. <laughs> She's just like, well, if you're not going to pay attention to me, then I'm just going to take your stuff. He doesn't know it. And the one day she took and she took one of his teddy bears off his bed because he keeps bear, he keeps like a bunch of stuffed animals on his bed for some reason. And she decided to go in there and take his stuffed animals. Well, he goes to go to sleep and there's this one stuffed animal that he loves. Now, Orion is not a dog person. Orion Orion likes dogs to an extent. As long as he can pet them and go on about his business, he likes dogs. But if he doesn't like a particular dog, he's not a dog person. Like, if, if, if it's not his dog, I should say, you know, he doesn't like the dog. He's not a big dog person. Like, most kids see dogs. Like, even when I go walking with the dogs, they see... It, they see when little kids see my dogs, it's always, Oh, Mom, look at the big puppies. And I'm like, they're, yeah, they're big babies, all right. But Orion is a cat person. We used to have a cat named Cheetah, but we had to get rid of our cat because Orion developed an allergy to her. Like, he broke out in the hives one day when I tried to brush her. So, I was like, I didn't realize it was that bad. And he would start coughing and sneezing and everything else. And I was like, he's miserable. We can't keep the cat. We're going to have to rehome the cat. So we had to rehome the cat. And he was upset with us after that because he really liked the cat. And he's been asking us for a cat ever since. Now, again, he's allergic. He's on allergy pills now. His allergies don't seem to be as bad here in North Dakota. But I don't want his allergies acting up because he wants a freaking cat. So I don't, we don't have a cat. But he has lots of cat things. And so one night when he was going to bed, he has this one little stuffed kitty cat that he sleeps with. I'm, I'm not sure why he loves the kitty cat so much. He just does. He loves the kitty cat. Well, Maggie had taken it one night and he threw a fit because he she had took his cat and how dare she take his cat. 
And I'm just like, it's a, it's a cat, dude. Like, you don't got to be all upset about it. That's my cat. All right, dude. So, yeah. So, he loves cats. Maggie loves dogs. All right. Sorry. Maggie came in with her friend from upstairs. Um, so, yeah. Orion is a cat person. Maggie is the dog person. And where Orion doesn't mind Daisy and Killian, he doesn't really mess with them too much either. Like, he won't, like, come over and play with them like Maggie will. Maggie will throw balls with the dogs and everything else. Orion will every once in a while. But for the most part, Orion is definitely a cat person. He gets that from Mr. Coffee's side of the family. They're cat people. My side of the family are dog people. So, Minna, she just likes pets. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could put Minna on a farm and she would turn into old McDonald. So, yeah, there's that. Um, nothing else really exciting, I don't think, happened this weekend. Minus the fact that yesterday, Maggie has this obsession with going into the bathroom when Orion's taking a shower. And she likes to scare him while he's in a shower. And she did it this weekend where we're sitting out here and we tell them to get a shower yesterday because on sun every Sunday night they have to get a shower. And during the winter, they can't shower. They don't shower every day because it breaks our skin out really bad if I shower every day. So every other day, they, like we'll wash up, like take a whore bath as they call it. We'll, we'll take a whore bath, but for the most part, every other day we take baths or showers. I don't like baths. I'm a, I'm an adult, and I don't want to soak in my own, like, dirt, so I don't take baths. Are you a bath or a shower person? Asking for myself. And so, Orion's in the shower, minding his own business, trying to take a shower. Orion hates showers, by the way. So getting him in there is already a feat. And then having someone constantly interrupting him while he's in there, he gets so frustrated. Well, apparently Maggie decided she was going to scare Orion. And when she went to go scare him, um, he slipped and fell. Don't worry, he's fine. He didn't hurt himself or anything. He caught himself on the edge of the tub with his hand. So he's fine. But he was mad. He was... Alright, sorry about that. Orion came to the door wondering why Maggie left him upstairs. So, Maggie is fussing with Mag Orion in his shower. I think that's where I left off. The next thing I know, Orion gets so mad, he jumps out of the shower... No towel, no robe, comes into the living room, little boy stuff swinging. Mom, Maggie, da, da, da. now take it. We have our patio, we have a, a balcony area, a big sliding glass door right next to the couch here where I'm sitting. And usually we have it open because it lets in all the light. Well, it was 8 o'clock, so luckily it was dark outside. But that just means people can see in our house better. And Orion comes in here stark naked, yelling about Maggie going into the bathroom, scaring him, and then turning the light off while he was in the shower. Why does she do these things? Why? I don't know. I'll never I'll never know. It's Maggie. That's. I guess this is what siblings do nowadays. And I'm like, okay. But when he tries to do it to her, she ended up squirting him in the face with shampoo. So, yeah, like, these are the things that happen in my house. If you're not, if somebody's not running around here naked, um, Maggie is torturing her brother. And Orion doesn't really do a whole lot to Maggie, but Maggie loves torturing him because she's like, if you're not going to play with me, I will force you to play with me. So, there's that. I'm also glad, thank you guys, everyone, that, uh was very supportive of me being salty about the door because I'm not even going to, I'm not lying. I'm really disappointed in that. I should have known I wasn't going to win. I even mentioned to my Patreons when I was working on the vlog this morning, told them, I know I'm not going to win. I'll be lucky if I place just because I know these people and they don't like me. And sure enough, I only got third place. So it's just like, it is what it is. I kind of, I just, I just, something inside of me knew not to get excited because I knew they would never let me win first prize. So, I'm glad it wasn't just me and everybody else saw that for the sham that it was. That and the one lady's decoration still had the tag on it from Walmart. And they were like, it's a homemade, it's not homemade. It literally still has the tag on it from Walmart. But it is what it is. Anyways, I'm going to make this a good day whether I like it or not. I actually started this diamond painting this morning. You wouldn't believe it, but I did. Last night I worked on tote bags for the shop. And then, uh... This morning, I decided I was going to do... I want to do at least one Halloween diamond painting this year because 
That fox, y'all, the confetti in that fox is killing me right now. I'm just not, I'm not in a mindset to deal with confetti. So I'm just like, I put it off on the couch next to me. So I'm not abandoning it altogether. And I'm going to work on it later. Like, I'll work on it at some point. I'll probably end up finishing this one before I get back to the fox. But this one will probably be done to, by tomorrow because of how quickly it works up. 90% of it is 310. So it's just me 310ing it up. Um, I also had some young lady ask me about doing a video with working on a square diamond painting. And I'm guessing she's new because most of the kits that I do are square. I even have a how-to video on how to diamond paint and it's square. So you also get to see me multi-place like crazy a square drill. I am doing what is called, what I like to call rage diamond painting. You ever get mad in diamond paint and you diamond paint really fast and you don't even realize how fast you're actually diamond painting? That's what I'm doing right now. This is this is my rage diamond painting. Um, I put up a clip of me doing multi-placing this morning on this. And literally in the two hours since then, I've completed all of this. And like I said, it's all three tenths. So it makes it really easy. The rest of these colors go like in here for shading and stuff for the pumpkin. So you can see the pumpkin's face and his eyes. But, yeah, so I have, oh, I'm expecting a package from Stitcherista. Apparently, she got overwhelmed with a few packages and asked me if I would do a couple of unboxings for her. So I told her, sure, I would. So I have something coming from Arteza, which I already have something from Arteza. I'm going to show you guys how to make a design that apparently only wins third place. Anyways, salty. Hashtag salty. Hashtag robbed of my prize. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I'll get over it. I'm just being a sore loser right now. Um, but yeah, so I have that coming. I also had somebody ask me about checking out a Canadian diamond painting store. Not the Pink Raspberry, because I've already checked them out. I haven't done the kit from them, but I, I have checked them out. Um, which I thought it was a design that Maggie would like whenever I show it to her. She freaks out. She's like, the little girl's creepy. So I'm like, well, I guess I won't be going up in your room. Gonna need to refill my wax soon. I've been going hard at this. And the fact that I got almost 90% of this kit done on one fill of wax is actually pretty good. And for those wondering, I'm using blue wax. Um, my wee wax is in my brown pen over there and I just happened to pick up this pen. I was very sad because I broke my uh, thicker than a snicker pen from a neighbor's outpost. The, for some reason where the multi-placer goes, a little part of it chipped off. And I don't know what it is about these thinner multi-placers, but they never fit in any pen. So I always have to put like washi tape in them to make them fit. So, yeah. Um, also, since we're talking about like anniversary stuff today, sort of kind of, uh, I have had, I, I've had people ask this before and I don't think I've ever answered it in a video. So I'm going to answer it now because a lot of you ask me where I get my rings from. Um, one, I don't have on my other ring today because of the swelling in my hand that happened after I hit my wrist. And so I had to take it off. It's just sitting over here. Matter of fact, I could probably put it back on now that my wrist isn't all swollen. But my silicone ring comes from a place called uh, Quelo, I believe is the name of it. Um, so Mr. Coffee, as you guys know, works in the oil field. When he started working in the oil field he couldn't wear his wedding ring and I didn't like that and so he told me that unless it's silicone he can't wear it and I was like oh okay and I'm not very much of a, a materialistic person like I the only name brand stuff I really like are my shoes I like Nikes they're my favorite um Nikes or Pumas Pumas my close second and so I'm, I, I'm not a materialistic type girl. I have a regular wedding ring. But I kind of felt bad wearing my wedding ring when Mr. Coffee couldn't wear his. And I decided so that not, it, he didn't care either way, but I felt some type of way wearing my real wedding ring. So what I did was when I bought his ring, I bought myself one as well. And I put mines away in my lockbox. I have a lockbox that I keep in the house with all of the important documents and guns and stuff like that. Don't worry about that. That's just a stove telling me that it's preheated. I put some stuff in it because it's dinner time here. Um, I bought 
him and I silicone rings and he asked me you know why did you buy yourself one I, I I thought only I needed one at first he thought it was for him and he's like why would you buy me a rose gold ring and I'm like look dude this ain't for you not everything's about you princess um he goes well why'd you you got a ring for yourself and I'm like yes and he goes why and I'm like because I feel bad that you can't wear yours so until you can wear a regular wedding ring again I won't wear mine and so I've been wearing a silicone ring ever since and it's changed. I used to have a black and white one that had arrows on it. And whenever him and I would hold hands, the arrows would point to each other. Well, that ring didn't hold up very well. It lasted all of a year before I had to buy him another one. And then uh, we got these last year, I think. I think we got these last year. And we've been rocking these ever since. Maggie got a new tea set. Um... I had a company ask me to do a product review of a tea set. Don't worry, you won't see it on the channel or anything. It has nothing to do with crafting. Um, I randomly will do reviews for companies on Amazon. They have like this app thing that you can do and it will send you stuff to review. You pay like a penny or something. And uh, one of the things on there was a tea set. And she got it today. I was going to save it for Christmas, but she saw it when I opened the box to get Mr. Coffee's tablet out. And yeah. I also bought myself a winter jacket because, if you guys remember, I fought last year with Finger Hut because of the jacket that I had gotten from them. The zipper kept breaking. I had been through three jackets and finally said, forget it, and now it's a coat without a zipper. Um, well, the coat is perfectly fine. It just has no zipper, so I can't zip it closed, which sucks because I love that jacket. It keeps me warm in the negative temperatures here. And there's not a whole lot of winter jackets out there that are rated for negative 15 degrees Celsius. So, which I don't even know what that is. What is that? Okay, so that's like 5 degrees here. But it's a really warm jacket, and I really liked it. And I, I didn't want to get another jacket, but I'm like, I need something that zips. Because I end up wearing two jackets when I wear my other jacket. It's a Canadian wear jacket. Well, I went... And I was like, maybe I should get another one off Finger Hut. And then I remembered all the hassle I had to deal with Finger Hut. And I was like, no. So I decided to get one off Amazon. Now, I don't normally buy clothes offline. And if you're like me, you don't either. Why? Because they never freaking fit. Um, have you ever seen Tommy Boy? The movie Tommy Boy with uh, Chris Farley? Um, and he's like... Big guy in a little coat. And this is why I call myself and the kids monsters. Because I, for a woman, I am tall. I am aware of this. My father was a tree. I'm tall. I get it. I know. But whenever I buy clothes offline, they never fit like they should. I always have to buy clothes in store. Especially pants. God, don't even get me started with pants. Um... So whenever I bought the coat off Amazon, I felt like Chris Farley from Tommy Boy. Big girl in a little coat. Now, it was my size. And I've been in an extra large for the last, I don't know, seven, eight, nine months. Almost a year now. Almost a year now I've been in an extra large. And I always get my jackets a size bigger so that in case I wear a sweater or something, I can fit in it comfortably and I don't feel like I'm the Michelin man squished up into it well I ended up getting a coat that I thought was going to keep me warm this little piece of plastic I might as well win wearing a, a Walmart bag I went outside and the temperature outside was like Haha, that's cute you got what you think is a winter coat no thank you shut that down right now now take it it's like 22 degrees outside right now meanwhile I literally felt like I was wearing a Walmart bag it was that thin like I was like, this isn't even really a jacket. So I bagged it back up and put it out for return because I can't. I can't. I refuse to spend my winters miserable with an ugly jacket. Like, I'm not doing it. So then I went on Amazon before I started recording and bought another Canadian gear jacket, hoping that it will be better than the one I got from Finger Hut. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. It was an arm and a leg, but when it comes to being warm and having nice warm clothes here you don't skimp on the price okay because it has gotten down to negative 50 degrees when we've lived here and i'm not about that life if you haven't noticed i'm not about that life but i have to be about that life because i have to walk dogs so yeah 
there's kids running in and out of my house. I'm not used to this. I'm used to the kids just kind of playing with each other and annoying the crap out of each other, not like going in and out stairs and everything else. Bye, Maggie. Bye. They have little acquaintances from upstairs that they have to go play with now. It's weird. Huh. So, yeah. So, I ordered myself a new jacket. I'm going to return the one that I bought because it doesn't fit. And I refuse to spend the entire winter miserable in a jacket that doesn't fit. And so, yeah, that's the majority of my day today. It's just been homeschooling. And we homeschooled longer than normal today just because trying to get back into the groove of homeschooling after being off for four days, good God. It was it literally was like a vacation, not having to wake up early, spending the days doing absolutely nothing. And then don't you hate it when you take a bunch of day you have a bunch of days off like that? And then you look back on the days and you go, I wasted all that time where I could have been doing something productive. I did nothing. Crap. So that's how I am right now, because I should have been making stuff for the shop. Minus the fact when I hurt myself, there was no making anything because I couldn't press down the the easy press to make sh like totes or anything, and like m just doing anything with the cricket this weekend was just a no go. So I was just like, ah, oh, forget it. Um, and then diamond painting, I diamond painted a little bit, but then that was hurting my wrist, so I had to stop. I think I'm just gonna finish all the black in this. I probably won't finish it with you guys, but yeah. I also got another order in from All Dashing. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about All Dashing nowadays. Um, when I first got contacted by them, I was like, oh, you know, this is cool. You know, I can wear these. I love the nails. But then they told us, you know, the price is going to go up on the nails. They were like $10 a pack. Now they're like $12 a pack. And I was like, oh, well, you know, supply and demand. They're gonna, The price could, sh you know, shift, whatever. But the quality is different. Like, they don't stick as well as they used to. And that's really sad and unfortunate because I don't like crap products and I don't want you guys buying crap products. And their new shipping is awful. I ordered five sets of nails, all shipped separately, all ordered at the same time. So I think I'm done with all dashing. I'm just saying. I'm not going to have you guys deal with what I've been dealing with whenever I try to order from them. I will still wear the ones I have, obviously, because I spent money on them. But I think when I'm done wearing them, I'm just going to take the affiliate link out because I don't like the way they're doing their stuff now. And to sit there and literally having five different shipments for all this stuff is ridiculous. It really is. Like, there's no need to have that much packaging being wasted because you are shipping things out of different stores. So I think after I'm done wearing all the ones that I have, I'm just going to be done with all dashing. It was fun while it lasted. I don't know if anybody else has tried. I, I know I saw a few people say that they didn't stick very long for them. I find that the shorter ones stick better for me. That and I don't have that underlying fear that I'm going to pierce a hole in the doggy bags and get my hand covered in dog poop. So yeah, like the stupid things that I, I worry about on a daily basis, I'm telling you. Um... But it's actually late here. I don't think I've ever recorded so late in the day. And it's weird because now the kids are like up with their friends and they're like, they're used to going back and forth between the two houses and I'm not used to recording. So I'm like, why do you guys keep coming in here? What is wrong with you? I'm so used to them just sitting still like, like good children. And now they're like, we have friends in a life and we have to get out of here. And I think... I think we're going to have a conversation tonight about getting Orion a cell phone for Christmas. Sorry about that. Apparently my mother-in-law was trying to call on the Alexa. Um, she'll call, She's calling in to say happy anniversary. But Mr. Coffee, I'm guessing she hasn't talked to her son today because he's not even here. And where I can talk to her, one, I'm in kind of in the middle of something. And two, the kids aren't even here. And I know she's going to want to talk to the kids, but the kids aren't here. So, like, I can talk to her later. The only sucky thing about not having the grandparents close is they call and everybody's busy doing their own thing now. And even my parents now, like, they have, like, this little game they like playing on Facebook. And uh, that's usually where my mom is in front of her computer on Facebook winning stuff. And they won this really cool carpet robot. And all I can think of is, I want a, I want a vacuum. 
I could never have a corporate robot though because uh I have dogs and where they wouldn't be afraid of it as they would attack it because it's moving by itself. If you bring anything in this house that moves by itself, more likely either Killian or Daisy will attack it. Now for some reason Daisy doesn't seem bothered by Maggie's fake spider, but Killian does. And if Killian sees Maggie playing with said spider, he will try to attack it like like he's trying to protect her from something. And that's kind of hilarious. So, uh, she, she plays with it until the batteries die, and then she comes back, you know, hey, the battery's dead. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you play with something to death. Like a chinchilla we used to have. Um, so... There's that. Sorry, my wa let me fill my wax up. Y'all, these kids, I'm telling you. I swear, kids, I'm telling you, kids are just like dogs. They go outside to come inside, to go back outside, to come back inside. Why do they keep running back and forth through the house? One minute they're playing a game, the next minute they're going outside to play, the next minute they're going upstairs, the next minute, hey, is dinner ready? The next minute they come back inside, they want to play for a little bit, and then they go back... If y'all don't stop running in and out of this house like it's summertime outside, I'm telling you what. Look, listen, we're not doing this. We're not. We're not doing it. Um, One more story before uh, I got to let you guys go. So I'm sitting here on the couch and I'm talking to Mr. Coffee. And we're watching TikTok. And we're just showing each other videos back and forth. And I show him that video. Uh, I put it up on my Instagram of the guy singing, waking his wife up. Well, the very next day, Mr. Coffee goes to wake up for work and his alarm keeps going off, but he won't wake up. And I'm getting frustrated because waking Mr. Coffee up is a lot of work. It take, It's like an all-day event. Like, I'm pretty sure a hurricane could come sweep our house down and he'd still be asleep. Like, they would find him in the wreckage asleep. Like, he is dead to the world whenever he's he's sleeping. Well, I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to wake him up, and then I remembered the video. So I go in the room, and I'm like, I need a microphone. So I put on my wish list a microphone uh, for my parents. Because once I get the microphone, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong in this piece, because I plan on seeing him awake. Alright, sorry about that. My mother-in-law called to wish us a happy anniversary. She didn't realize her son wasn't off work today. So, yeah. Um, I can't wait, though, because Thanksgiving's the next holiday up. And my big girl thoughts are like, oh my god, Thanksgiving. It's going to suck, of course, for a lot of people because you can't be with your family. Some people aren't going to care and just going to be with their family anyways. Um, and I live too far away from my family to just go hop over and jump and skip and go visit them. Plus, I would go visit Minna first. Because, you know, it's my kid. Parents would be okay. My kid, though. Um, so, all I can think of is uh, I'm ready to eat Thanksgiving already. Like, Halloween this year is going to suck because the kids can't go trick-or-treating. Even though they're like, yeah, you can still let your kids go trick-or-treating. Um, we have one of the highest uh, upticks of the virus in the, the state that I live. And the guys around here and the women that work in the oil field travel around. Which is probably why the uptick is so high. It's because so many people do travel around. And I'm like, and you're thinking I'm taking my child out to go trick-or-treating? You've got to be out of your mind. You must have fallen and bumped your head. I, my kids ain't going trick-or-treating this year. We will play Easter egg hunt. And they will Easter egg hunt this year. Because I'm, I'm not doing the trick-or-treating thing this year, no. So I told him we're going to do an Easter egg hunt. We're going to hide a bunch of candy in the house and make them go find it. Because, uh, yeah, no, I'm not taking my kids trick-or-treating this year. No. Trick-or-treat. Trick is you get a virus. No. No, thank you. I'm, I'm good. So we're not doing trick-or-treating this year, so Halloween's kind of canceled. And, like, we're just going to sit and watch Halloween movies, I guess. Because, yeah, no. No, I'm not going out there. And that saves me a trip of having to go outside while it's cold. And there was a trick or there was a year, one year that I didn't get to go trick or treating because I lied to my parents. I think it was the year I uh, I wanted to go to a skating party with my class, and my parents told me no. 
Now, I don't think it was going to cost them anything. I don't remember. But I remember my parents telling me, no, I couldn't go. And I'm like, yeah, if I remember correctly, it didn't cost anything because I was sitting there the entire time going, well, what is it? It's not, it doesn't cost them anything. All they have to do is sign a paper. And they wouldn't sign the paper for me, so I didn't think it was fair. So what did I do? I didn't forge my dad's signature. No, no, no. That's for amateurs. I took and glued my dad's signature off of another piece of paper onto my, my permission form. Now, I thought I was gold, okay? My teacher looked at it. She was like, all right, you know, go take your seat. She took the permission forms that morning. We go to get on the bus, and she calls me back in, and she goes, Leisha, we got to talk. And I'm like, what are we talking about? Like, what, what's going on right now? We got a skate party to go to. Let's go skate. And she tells me, she asked me why my paper's wet. Because I use, it wasn't just regular, like, Elmer's glue. I use rubber glue. Like, the glue that comes with, like, that pink brush that's all, like, super, like, goopy. I decided to use that glue. And, um, yeah, it, it didn't dry fast enough. Like, it was still, like, it looked like somebody had poured something on it. And when she asked me, I had the perfect excuse. I'm like, my dad spilled his coffee on it whenever he was signing it. Like, whatever. It's his signature. Like, you can check it. It's his signature. Well, this lady, her hate and tail goes and calls my parents and tells them that she thinks I pasted my dad's signature on the paper. And I'm like, why are you hating on me, woman? Like, seriously? Like, you couldn't just let me go on this skating trip? Like, seriously? So, she tells my parents, which I think my mom came and got me from school. I got yelled at by her. I got a spanking from my dad because don't be forging my signature. I'm like, technically, I didn't forge it. I glued it on there. That's not forging, is it? Asking for myself. And so, yeah, yeah, that year I didn't go to, get to go trick-or-treating. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to kill the kids to not go for one year. Like, they just started going like a year ago anyways. Mostly because where I lived at in Lewistown, they would do trick-or-treating, but the kids are too little. And I'm not going to have a bunch of little kids. My kids are already hyper as it is. Without candy. I'm not going to go get them hyped up on candy when they barely have enough teeth to eat it. And then I'm going to be sitting there the one eating it, gaining all the weight. No, no, no. So until my kids are actually old enough to enjoy things, I don't take them to go do things. Like amusement parks and stuff. Like, that's like taking a baby to Disney World. What? I don't see the point in it. I don't. Like, why? They're not going to remember it, one. Two, you're spending all that money for them to go in. And they can't get on anything. Like, you can't put a baby on a roller coaster and go, hope for the best. Like, no. I'm not, no. I like to think I'm a practical parent, but I'm pretty sure I'm just overly paranoid. Mm. Um, it, That comes with the territory of bipolar disorder. Don't worry about it. But, yeah, so I figured we'll just sit in the house and watch movies and camp out in one of the kids' room. One of the things we like to do whenever we can't go out to do something is we'll blow up the air mattress and go lay in one of the kids' rooms, and we'll put on a movie and eat popcorn and sit in there and just chill and then spend the night in that kids' room. More like uh, we fall asleep. Like, everybody falls asleep, and then me and Mr. Coffee will get up and go to our room because I'm not sleeping on no air mattress, okay? There's a whole California king-size bed in my room. I'm not sleeping on no dang air mattress. But, yeah, so that has been my weekend and my week so far. Highly entertaining, I guess. Um... So I actually now have to go to the UPS. That's that's sad. that's sad. that's the sad part right there. Is I have to go to the UPS store. If you guys remember one of the last times I went to the UPS store, besides my trip to go take uh, the and get my Betty Boop paintings from UPS, um, which I guess I didn't tell that story on here yet. But okay, we can make it my last story because I don't have much longer on here before my my food's done. So apparently. UPS in the mornings has a code to get into the door, but they didn't give the new delivery driver the code, so I had to chase down my box all day. And needless to say, I didn't get my box until 8 o'clock that evening. It was supposed to be delivered at 8 o'clock that morning. It took me 12 hours to get it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't like having to go to UPS because the last time I went before that time, I got lost and ended up in Montana. I now know where the store is at. I still just don't like going up there. And I will keep stuff that I'm not happy with just to avoid having to go up there. Luckily, Mr. Coffee's off. The jacket has until February 1st to be returned. 
And I'm like, all right, it's already it's already in its bag. And Mr. Coffee can just drop it off on his way to work tomorrow. So, yay. And Mr. Coffee's last day is tomorrow. So, like, I get the rest of the week with him, which means I don't have to walk the freaking dogs by myself for the rest of the week, which is lovely. Um, I don't like going out at night, not because I'm scared of the dark. I just don't like being outside at night. And having to walk the dogs at night is quite a chore for me. So, I'm going to be very excited when he actually is home and can walk the dogs for me at night because I hate it. He hates it too, but he hates it a lot less than I do because he likes cold weather. I don't. So usually in the cold, in the winter time, he walks the dogs more. In the summertime, I walk the dogs more because I know how much he hates the heat. So yeah, but I'm going to have to let you guys get going here soon because I got to go cook dinner. It's late and the kids haven't eaten yet. And I'm pretty sure at this point they're going to start eating each other if I don't get them some food. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crazy videos just like this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. But with that said, folks, I got to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If Again, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys coming every day or every week, coming to visit me and listen to my coffee house shenanigans. So thank you. But with that said, I got to get out of here, folks. So just remember, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Keep your six feet and always try to be kind, be courteous, be cool. Bye, guys.